People often have faith in others based on their good reputation. How does one demonstrate that trust? The centurion in Luke demonstrated his trust in Jesus' ability to heal by telling him just to speak a word. In Luke 7, Jesus ministers to a centurion, a widow with one child, and a sinful woman. On the whole, the chapter shows that Jesus cares for those who are deemed as outsiders. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Luke chapter 7, verse 7. This verse reveals the central figure of the narrative, a centurion who had a slave. A centurion was the term used for a man who commanded roughly a hundred soldiers. The story shows this man to have been humane, wealthy, and pious. Although Luke does not provide the details of the servant's illness, its seriousness is clear. The life of the servant could be described as hanging by a thread near death. The centurion was concerned, for the slave was dear to him. The centurion's love and high estimation of his servant shows that he considers him not only in his function, but also as a person. Here we see faith and love mingled together. It is important that, like the centurion, we esteem people based on who they are as people, rather than the functions they perform or their social status. Jesus' love, which reaches both the nearest and the farthest, responds to this double affection. Because the servant's situation is a serious one, the centurion decides to take action. The centurion has heard about Jesus and his ministry as a miracle worker. His faith leads him to action. However, he appeared to be hesitant to ask Jesus directly for help. This might be because he is a Gentile, and Jesus is a Jewish teacher. Sensitive to Jewish sentiment, he does not himself approach Jesus. He requests his Jewish friends, who are important people in their community, to intercede for him, which they do most readily. In verse 3, we learn what the centurion wanted the Jewish elders to ask. But verse 4 records what they really said. They did more than present the centurion's request. They went on beseeching Jesus earnestly for this man who was their benefactor. Here is a Gentile who respects Jewish worship and has affection for the people. In addition to showing his heart for the Jewish people, this detail also gives insight into the centurion's economic status. The centurion clearly is a man of means and generosity. Jesus accepted the invitation of the elders to go with him. In so doing, he demonstrates that his compassion transcends all racial boundaries and that all are worthy of his mercy, regardless of status or ethnicity. As such, the centurion sent friends to stop him and implores Jesus not to trouble himself to enter the house. In addition to showing his humility, this also shows the centurion's awareness of Jewish culture. As Jews would be considered unclean if they ate together with Gentiles, most Jews would not even enter a Gentile's house to avoid becoming unclean. The centurion's humility stops Jesus from having to confront this social expectation. However, the centurion has not given up asking for Jesus' help. He trusts in Jesus' authority. It is important to remember that in antiquity, miraculous healings were expected to involve direct contact. The centurion, however, believes in the divine efficacy of Jesus' word, a conception of language not possible in antiquity. It is not so much the difference in the transmission of divine power, language instead of action, that amazes Jesus, but the fundamental trust in the power of Jesus' word. In the faith of the centurion, the word of Jesus, given unseen and from a distance, can deliver the precious servant from his illness. It is a profound insight that the centurion possesses and expresses, even though physically absent. Jesus can show his presence effectively. The lesson is a key one for us today who do not have Jesus' physical, visible presence with us. The centurion recognizes that God's power works through Jesus without spatial limitations. Jesus is entrusted with great authority. In addition, there is a resultant recognition of personal unworthiness. Jesus praises the centurion's humility mixed with deep faith. The soldier approaches the man of God on the proper terms. Through his com commendation, Jesus calls us to trust him in a similar way.